Last night, our pasture caught on fire. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. God, it looks like a lot of bison. There is something wrong with this picture. You guys know Haas? There's Haas. And here's Big Joe. You know that's different. There's something going on here. Well, I've got something to tell you guys. So, last night, our pasture caught on fire. So basically what happened is, uh, we all went and had a family dinner. We were out of town. We just got back to town um, in Sulphur and um, we were at a convenience store and I got a call from a neighbor. Maya, quit. I got a phone call from a neighbor and he said, hey, uh, my parents just told me that your place is on fire. And it's up near your barn and immediately Marissa and I were like oh my gosh that is not the phone call you want to get and uh, I just want to thank Zach for uh, for calling he's the first person that called and immediately your heart just sinks and you have no idea what's going on and then uh, so I turned around real quick we were about to head to a friend's place to hang out and uh, we make a quick turn and we start heading west to, to the Ponderosa and then I get another call within a minute, and uh, it's actually my friend's, uh, it's actually the friend's uh, house we were going to. He is a, uh, he is a volunteer fireman. Well, he has a scanner always on in case he has to go on call. And um, it came on the scanner, came on the radio that uh, our property is on fire. And so they, uh, they called me within a minute. And then I had another phone call Right after that, um, my brother-in-law, Daniel from Arms Family Homestead, he called me because uh, he's got a friend that works for the county sheriff's office and he was responding to it. He was actually in the area and could see uh, the bright lights and, and the flame colors uh, and the place lit up. So he was probably within a couple of miles and he called Boone and said, hey, you need to let Dusty know his place is on fire. So I had like three calls, boom, boom, boom. And by this time we were going probably too fast across town and uh, but you know you're worried because you're thinking this is on fire or it's about to be on fire and, and the other thing is these animals right here they're in the pasture the big Joe the big Joe herd is, is down in that pasture and so what we did was is we uh, we got over here as fast as we could we worried about the bison we got to get them in because people don't even know if they're driving out in the pasture if they if those bison are out there I think some people know uh, that uh, you know we, we do raise bison I didn't know if they knew they were out there or not so we uh, we got over here as fast as we could and we topped the hill and we just see red uh, everywhere and it just lights up the entire sky and it's just uh, a very scary <laughs> uh, moment and I know it was very scary for Marissa uh, especially too so um, and uh, you guys know how hard we've been working on this place to try to get it going and fence building and whatnot and cleaning up and working on the barn and just trying to do everything for these animals and when you pull over that hill right up here when you, when you pull up and you top that hill and you see our property and it's just lit up in that fire sky and uh, just not a good feeling but um, we pulled down here and we saw the neighbors that actually I think may have been the first people that uh, saw the fire um, and uh, they helped us out. They flagged the firemen down. There were already probably, I don't know, four or five trucks that had already responded and that were here in the middle of the pasture. Um, and they went through a couple open gates that I haven't put up yet. Uh, Marissa and I just finished building the front fence. We haven't put up a gate yet. And um, they had went through it and they were already getting after it. And um, more of them were coming and I was able to get them through the main portion of our property here and the, and the main entry uh, where what I've we just put in so uh, but luckily Big Joe and the ladies were actually sitting over by the gate on the north side of this barn ready to come in I think these animals would have been fine escaping the fire but 
when we pulled up here and saw everything, I was like, okay, I gotta get the bison in. And I didn't have to go chase them down or anything. They were literally over here in a gate that they know they can go in and out of, and they have previously before. So uh, the, the calves were fine. The Dakota Pure calves were, were all good, hanging out in the crowd where they were supposed to be, chilling. They were, they were relaxed. And, and Big Joe and that herd, my adult herd, they were literally sitting there waiting. And I opened the gate and, um, you know, I told them to come on. So, <laughs> you know, I didn't have a feed bucket or anything, but they just came right in. Um, they know kind of what's in here, and uh, they know there's always hay, and, and there's good things in here because uh, that's just part of where we fed them before. And so they, they came in here, and I'm like, we just had to mix them in. It was something fast I had to do. So we've got all of them right here. we got the Dakota Pier calves, and we have our um, big adult herd in here. They're totally fine. They can mix in together. Um, we won't keep them like this. We'll separate them eventually, but... Um, anyway, so that's how that went, and the rest of it was, uh, it was, we, we watched it burn, and, uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, we did what we could. Baker, he's just about here. fire department did a heck of a job they did a great job and they jumped on it really fast and uh, they got the fire stopped it actually went into my north neighbor's property a little bit so they did have to tear down a fence uh, to get through it and uh, sometimes that's just part of it if uh, to get the job done because it was it was running on their property going north from a south wind that was pushing it north so let's uh let's go see uh let's go check the damage and i'll show you guys where I think it started actually. All right, so I'm down here in the area where the fire actually, I think, started. Um, and, and this is kind of wild because we're not really 100% uh, sure how this started. Kevin and I started this burn pile two Fridays ago and there was snow and ice still left on the ground and of course it was safe to burn and, and we knew the grass was dry then we even pushed with the skid steer I pushed the grass away from it and debris and made it even muddy around it so it couldn't get out it it burnt for maybe two one day I came back I pushed it up closer to try to get it to burn and you can see there's still a bunch of cedar left there's a bunch of logs left in there some of it's green it's not going to burn very well hasn't smoked in a week. My neighbor over here, who I'm, I'm gonna share this new fence with that we're, I'm, I've been working on, uh, said I hadn't seen smoke at all either. And then we had this pile here. And um, we, we burnt this, we actually pushed it down into, there was a, a, a little junk pile left here from the previous owner. And uh, we pushed it down here in this little low spot and we burn it. We did some back burning where we, it would protect it, um, and it uh, it's wild because we have no idea how this re-sparked. I mean, look at this. This is bare ground. That's hard ground. There's no grass in there, and, and that's what we did around a big portion of it. But so after the phone calls and everything, I'm like, how did this start? How did this fire start at 7:30? 
eight o'clock at night and uh, we kn the wind was blowing um, definitely one of the windiest days we've had recently high fire alert to uh, the past two days but it's 7:30 at night there's a cold front about to come through eight o'clock 7:30 at night and how does this fire even start I, I really don't know and it had to have blown from here to here to even get it started and uh, it's pretty wild how it did but um, you know one of the firefighters said it could have been uh, roots which is could be pretty likely but you can see the wind just enough last night must have got it enough and it slowly made its way over here so I'm I'm really confused and really unsure how this uh, ignited plus you know when the when the Sun goes down the humidity um, comes up and the grass was obviously dry we knew that look you can see how tall that grass is it's hip high in some places it had enough wind behind it and must have had uh, just a little spark something just get it going and once the wind got a hold of it and got it in this dry grass it took off and you can see it so way over there is where they cut the fence on my neighbor's side see some of the bison right here there's our barn and that's how close it got you can see some black right up there where those bison are so you're probably looking at oh maybe less than a hundred yards from uh, the bison or where the black is to the barn well we got the fence patched up Kevin came over to help patch it up quickly uh, another good friend Kevin Birch came over and another close friend of mine Jake came over and we got the fence patched up in probably 30 minutes uh, with all of us coming together and so you never forget that. we just let the bison out we let the big Joe herd back out in the pasture and they've probably been out of there a little over maybe 15 or 16 hours they've been pinned up uh since the fire came through so they're already got the fence patched up and they're already back in the pasture which is where they belong got them a fresh bell of hay we're back in action everybody's been burning around this county they've been burning in the mountains and everybody's been burning because it, the conditions were right um except when the wind blows and you know obviously it's not good to do it then but everybody is burning because they knew this was going to happen we had a good chance to, of uh, of rain um today and everybody's been burning because of this and if you wait to burn too late you'll damage that green grass and there already is some green grass that was growing here and if you wait too late you'll lose that green grass so that's why when you get your opportunities to burn you take it while you can because you can burn and then you got rain coming you better have a good chance of rain um, because if you don't then all of this will just blow away and you won't have that regrowth for the spring grasses as your the temperature and the climate starts to change from uh, winter into spring which we're very close to spring but take a look at all the green grass right here you can see the green grass that was below all this thick uh, native grasses here um, this was hanging out down below and of course it burns the tips and whatnot this now it's pouring down pretty good now this is great it's perfect this but I'm gonna get in the truck before I get soaked anyways here's some drone footage of everything
Well, guys, this is what <laughs> every every person that burns, this is what you want it to do. You want to burn and then get the rainfall, which is perfect. We need rainfall. It's super dry here, and that's one of the reasons this pasture caught on fire is because this grass is very, very dry. But um, uh, the burn worked out nicely. However, um, we just are very, we just don't know how I got started, but this is what I'm thinking has happened, what I just explained to you. That's the only way it could have um, ignited, and it blew to the north. And luckily, it stayed away from the barn, and uh, it didn't go south which my neighbor lives oh probably a couple hundred yards away he's got a barn he's got a couple cows and, and equipment hay and uh, luckily it didn't go south because it could have been very very bad a lot worse um we're lucky uh we didn't get any structures and we're lucky that the fire department um, responded very fast sulfur and davis fire department i just want to thank them because uh those guys got out here and they got out here fast and um, a lot of those people knew who owned it and who had the buffalo. I'm one of the only guys, you know, who's the buffalo guy? It's, it's Dusty. So um, they knew that uh, that we had the bison out here and whatnot. And luckily, everybody responded fast and, and got out here and got this uh, fire contained. So I want to thank the Sulphur and Davis Fire Department, some of the volunteer firemen, and uh, the, oh, the Murray County Sheriff's Department for... Uh, notifying um everyone and for responding um late at night 7 30 8 o'clock on your saturday night is typically uh, not what you want to do on your saturday night um, but it gave the fire department a little excitement on their weekend um out here with the um, pasture fire with the bison so um everybody's safe and uh, now we're getting rain so even though our part of our pasture burnt and it could have got the whole pasture on fire um, if it was during the day, it would have been a lot worse conditions during the day because it was a lot drier and the humidity um, was a lot lower then. It, it, basically, what this is is after that's burnt, um, you're left with all those, you're left with all the nutrients, basically fertilizer that goes back into the ground from all the dead vegetation. So part of life, and um, just. Luckily, it didn't get to the barn, and it didn't hurt the bison. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank the fire departments for everything. I'm, uh, thank you for the community coming together for stuff like this. And it kind of, these weird events do bring your community together. And, and um, can't wait to keep doing more stuff out here. And hopefully we don't have those problems anymore. <laughs> no uh, no out-of-control fires. So even, even though I do love burning, it's one of my most favorite things to do. And I'd have loved to have been out here fighting that fire with them. But I was trying to get the, the bison taken care of and everything else managed. So, anyways, thank you guys for watching us. And um, we'll see you next time.